What's up, my stat stars? In this video, I'm gonna be breaking down the 2024 AP Statistics free response question number three, hopefully showing you everything you need to do to get a good score. All right, here is the question. A car maker produces four different models of cars, A, B, C, and D. A group of researchers is, is investigating which model of car has the longest distance traveled per gallon of gas, also known as the mileage. Higher mileage is considered better than lower mileage. The researchers will conduct a study in which they contact several owners of each model of car and ask them to investigate their mileage. Is this an observational study or an experiment? Justify your answers in context. So before I show you my answer, keep in mind that an observational study, you observe, you ask questions, you take notes, you might measure things, but you don't give people or anything to do. Like you don't hand something out and tell people, hey, this is what you're gonna do, this is what you're gonna do. That is of course is where we become an experiment. When things start to be controlled, we got ourselves an experiment. Well, this is not an experiment. This is an observational study. No treatments were given to anyone or anything. They simply selected random cars of each models and measured the mileage distance traveled per gallon on each of the cars in the sample. So again, all they were doing was simply gathering a sample of people and asking them questions. This could be just as viewed as an observational study through a sample survey, just getting information from different car owners. All right. Now for question B, they first bring up that Model D has an autopilot feature in which the car controls its own motion with human supervision. James owns a Model D car and will investigate whether using the autopilot feature results in higher mileage than not using the autopilot. James will drive his car on 70 different days to and from work using the same route at the same time each day. James will record the mileage each day. Now, James will be using a completely randomized design to conduct his investigation Describe an appropriate method James could use to randomly assign the two treatments, driving under the autopilot feature and driving without, using the autopilot feature to the 35 days each. Now, my, all, my recommendation is to always keep it simple. Here's what I would recommend doing. James can simply look at a calendar for the next 70 days in which he will be driving to and from work and label those days 0, 1 through 70. He will then use a random number generator to select numbers, making sure to ignore repeats and numbers that not assigned to a day. Then the first 35 numbers selected and those corresponding days, he will use the autopilot feature. And on the remaining days, he will not use the autopilot feature. It's really that simple. Don't overcomplicate it. A lot of kids will be like, oh, on day one, he's going to flip a coin. On day two, he's going to flip a coin. On day three, he's going to flip a coin. Heads is autopilot, tails is not. Well, the problem is, what if he gets all heads? I mean, that would be pretty unlikely, but you never know. I mean, obviously that method could honestly work if described really, really well, but something is this simple also works too. Got 70 days, look at a calendar, label those days 0, 1 through 70, use a red number generator, pick 35 days, those days use autopilot, the other days he's not. Now, I also want to mention a couple of really good things. The question didn't even ask about this stuff, so it doesn't really matter. But I wanted to take note that it's really important that you understand why he was using the same route at the same time each day, because the if he changes the route, well, it's obviously going to change the distance traveled. And if different times a day, there's different traffic patterns, and sometimes in heavy traffic, it takes longer, lighter traffic, it takes shorter, that could all affect gas mileage. So he tried to keep everything as similar as possible, which is exactly what you're supposed to do in an experiment. Now you say, well, wait a minute, I thought just this observational study, why is this not an experiment? Well, because now James, who's looking at his Model D car is actually assigning some days to autopilot and some days to not. So this does now turn into an experiment. Not based on what was previously said though when they were just selecting people to look at. All right. After the investigation was completed, James verified that the conditions for infants were met and he conducted a hypothesis test. He discovered that the mean gas mileage when using the autopilot feature was significantly higher than the mean gas mileage when not using the autopilot feature. James is a member of the Model D Club with thousands of members who all drive Model D cars. He will give a presentation at a Model D Club members meeting later this day and would like to state that the results of his hypothesis test apply to all Model D cars in his club. Well, another member of the club who is an statistician tells James his findings do not apply to all Model D members in the club. What change would James need to make to his original study to be able to generalize to all Model D cars in the club? Now, first, the question did not ask this. It just wants us to know what James could do to change it. But, you know, why? Why is this statistician correct? Well, there's lots of confounding variables. First off, 
James is just one driver. Maybe James's driving habits are confounding with the mileage and all of a sudden his driving habits are a problem and you can't just because it works for James doesn't mean it's gonna work for everybody. It could also be the specific route that he's taking. Yes, he's staying consistent using the same route every day, but depending on the surface of the ground, the, the length of that route, the different traffic, that again, it all applies to him. So his results are gonna be very good to show that he is better when he's using the autopilot feature for mileage, but not everybody because there's way too many confounding variables. So my suggestion would be to select a random sample of 500 or so Model D car owners. We wanna get a big replication here, so we want lots of Model D car owners, and of course they have to be selected randomly. Then we can actually do a match pairs assignment, experiment, excuse me, where each owner is paired with themselves. So each owner will drive to and from work with autopilot one day while using autopilot, another day while not using autopilot. And that could be done randomly. Like wh which day does Johnny use his autopilot, which day does not, that would need to be selected at random. Now it would actually maybe even better if we added that every one of the 500 people selected are gonna do it for 70 days as well. 70 random days on autopilot, 70 days with not, and then everybody's gonna have two numbers. They're mean with autopilot, they're mean without, and then we're gonna have a bunch of these means that we could then look at the differences between all of them to show that it's true for many, many people, not just James. Um, now, obviously, James still needs to ensure that everyone drives the same path while using autopilot or not. Now, that doesn't mean all 500 people have to use the same path, but it means like Johnny, he's going to use the same path regardless of what he's using, same time of day. All those important things we mentioned that were good for James need to be good for everybody as, as well. And then maybe we have Jennifer. Jennifer's also going to make sure that, you know, when she does her driving with autopilot and not with autopilot, she's driving the same route, same time of day. And if we keep that consistent for every Everybody, but then we can show that it's true for everybody, that mean difference for everybody between the mileage um, with autopilot and with not is better when you're with autopilot, then that's going to really show that it's true for all Model D car owners. But he needs to do it for way more than just himself. So this was the collecting data problem from this year's exam, and I thought it was a pretty easy one with three questions that were not overly difficult whatsoever. But if you want to get full credit, you got to make sure to explain in detail your answers. Don't give simple one-word answers like no, yes, make it a random sample, or include more people. You got to explain yourselves to really get that full credit that you're looking for. All right, hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully I explained it well, and hopefully you got a good score.